welcome to Fire It Up with CJ show. We're on part three talking to Elizabeth Lesser about her book, Cassandra Speaks, When Women Are the Storytellers. And so um, in the second segment, we were talking about power. And one of the things that you mentioned in your book is, you know, the proper use of power. How can we use, you know, let's say that we find the inner power within us um, or the balance of female and male energy, whatever the power may come. How do we know that um, we're using that power appropriately, not necessarily from Machiavellian ways or from Lao Tzu's art of war, you know, and if we're just using the power in a different, in, in the right way? Well, it's, um, <clears throat> I'm, 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 listening to your question and you saying using the power in the right way you know power corrupts anyone anyone can be corrupted by power the idea that what if women finally become empowered and we get into a leadership situation and we're committed to doing power differently that's not enough, we can easily become corrupted by power because for all sorts of reasons. One, leadership is so difficult. Running a business or running a school board or running a country, it's not, it's, it's difficult. Other humans are involved. And whenever I say, whenever two or more of us are gathered in any name, there's trouble. You know, people are always, uh, creating trouble for each other. It right. just happens. So it's, first of all, especially for women in leadership positions, I always say, give yourself a break. You are not going to do this perfectly. You might end up reverting to behavior that you're, you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. You know, it's like when, when, you're a kid and you say, I'll never be a parent like that. And then right. suddenly you're a parent and you're screaming at your kid and you're like, help, I'm turning into my mother or my father. Right. We, we live in a culture that is still a male dominated, white male dominated, whatever, you, however you want to say patriarchy. So we're all fish swimming in a system. And it's very hard to entirely break out of a system and change a system but you can change your interactions with other human beings every day in everything you do. So how do I do power differently or how do I try to? I try very much to listen to the real experience of the people I work with. I try to give them a chance to have a voice so many people are afraid to say what they mm. need, to say what they think. So they're quiet and silent in a meeting, let's say. And then they go and they, behind the back of the leader, they start acting out or talking or forming little cliques. And I, I try very much to create safe environments for people to share whatever it is that's going on for them not to give everyone what they want. Sometimes, you know, one of the great leadership teachers now, Brene Brown, I don't know if you've read Brene's book. Mm -hmm. Brene has a beautiful line where she says, clear is kind. Mm. So we often think it's kind to be nice. And women are very afflicted with being nice. If I say something mean or somebody doesn't want to hear they won't like me. It's very hard to be a leader and to be liked all the time. And if mm -hmm. our goal is to be liked, it doesn't work very well with leadership because there's so many hard decisions <laughs> we have to make. And by yes. leadership, I don't mean running an organization necessarily. I mean, being a parent, you know, anything you do where you have the authority, you're not always going to be liked. But being kind is different than being liked. Mm -hmm. Sometimes to be kind is to clearly say, 
you did not do that job the way we agreed you were going to do that job. Mm -hmm. You did not show up in the way we agreed. And I'm telling you, I know you can. I know mm. you have the goods to do this, but you didn't. Can you explain to me why you didn't? Mm -hmm. what's, what's holding you back? Is it something in you? Is it something in me as your authority figure? Is it something in the structure? Let's work together so that the next time I'm having this meeting with you and it didn't work out, um, you can more clearly tell me. So that person may say, whoa, what an intense boss. I don't like that. And then at some point you may have to fire a person, you know, like clear though is sometimes kind because you're helping that person live in reality. With mm -hmm. you. you know, I had an experience after 9-11 um, a lot of um, professions in New York City required people to take mindfulness classes or social emotional learning or stress reduction classes, especially people who were first responders, firefighters, police people, ambulance drivers, because there was so much PTSD. Mm. And we thought these people need some skills. And so I went and taught meditation to um, first responders. Uh, it was a six week program. And I was really out of my element because I was used to teaching it to people who like self-selected and, you know, right. to do it. But I loved these guys. It was all men. It was all firefighters. Oh, and, perfect. Uh, and so they loved the meditation and they really got it quickly and started learning it. And then sometimes in the sessions, and maybe you've noticed this as a mindfulness teacher, sometimes just the act of sitting quietly and softening, people will cry. And, and it's, it's, it's fascinating to me that just, just the act of stopping the busy mind and the active body and the doing things, there's wells of grief in there or uh, unmetabolized emotions and, and they, they come up. And so I would notice, I'd look, open my eyes and the, a, a, a guy would be, a tear would be coming down or there'd be a oh. sob. Oh. I'd want to talk about it. I'd want to in the group say, what was that about? What were you feeling? Nobody would talk about it. And I'd say, you know, there's all these studies done that there's, there's even suicide rates that are elevated among first responders because you can't express what's in here. And it's bad for relationships, it's bad for your health, you know, but they wouldn't do it. Mm. And I would say to them, you are brave enough to go into a burning building, but this is a different kind of courage. Um, it's, it's courageous to say what's on your heart. It's mm -hmm. courageous to say to your wife, I get re-triggered if you do this from, mm -hmm. they, it, it was the hardest thing. And this is very hard for all of us. We have not been taught how to um, express what's in here, especially the shadowy emotions. Mm. Leader, to me, one of the skills of the new kind of leadership is to help people unlock their emotional intelligence mm. and to find their voice and to say what they need and to admit their shortcomings mm -hmm. instead of building up this, so I can do it, you know, to say, I, I don't know how to do it. That's mm -hmm. why it, 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 that's why this, um, you're telling me I didn't do the job well. I don't know how to do it. Could you help me? Oh my God, I don't know. Could you help me? This is so hard for all of us. And I think new leaders, 
one of the skills is to learn how to help people be vulnerable, say what's on their mm -hmm. heart, to create spaces where that's, that's normal, that's normalized, mm -hmm. and you're not punished right. for admitting, I don't know. And this was the hardest thing for those guys. And I, I kept saying to them that it is just as heroic for you to be vulnerable as it is for you to be strong. Can you learn that? Can you at least know it? And you know, they would joke and they'd say, I'm not a little girl and things like that. But I think some of it must have gotten through to them. I hope it did. I think it did. I mean, I think that interestingly, when I think of firefighters, um, I think of people who have incredible hearts. You don't just jump into a fire, you know, <laughs> without having a gigantic heart. Absolutely. Yeah. So to find the full expression. But what I loved about um, the beautiful examples that you shared is how a woman leads differently, right? She listens. She asks questions. She says, what can I do to do? What can I do to help? You know, I don't know, you know, all these kinds of things. And um, what do you need? And creating the kind of safe environment to work together. It's, um, you know, one of the things that I found so dismaying in um, this time that we're in right now is there's a time in which like, people are finally listening and the tables are turned. And when people have the gavel and can talk, it's, it's actually dismaying to me to see sometimes what people do. So, you know, if I'm a person of color and, and as an Asian person don't necessarily or generally don't express a voice, which a lot of people of my descent do, um, all of a sudden if I have the voice, but I use that voice to punish others and to tell them that they're wrong and to tell them how my way is better and to force all those things, um, it, to me, it, it's like, wait, this is just flipping roles. Now you're the oppressor and they're the victim. Like what, I, I, I don't even know what that's all about, but that um, to me, it, it could be the thing that you were saying earlier, which is that we have inculcated to us, into us what power looks like and power means to like tell the other person what's right, what they should do, what good looks like. And for them to follow, you know, it's just, it's really, that's one of the most dismaying things well, I think you know, I see. When you think of who are the people that the world adores and worships, Jesus, Dr. King, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, these are the people we generally agree uh, these are our icons of, of um, realized human beings. They're mm -hmm. our beacons. What did, you know, Dr. King used nonviolence and all nonviolence means is I'm going to, he called it the double victory that I will win my freedom, but in doing so, you will become more free too, Mr. Mm -hmm. Oppressor. Mm -hmm. the double freedom and there are there are tried and true skills for achieving the double the double victory the double victory is what he called it mm -hmm. that my liberation will lead to your liberation mm -hmm. we're not going to lead to each other's liberation by doing what you just said you know mm -hmm. i said in an earlier segment Nietzsche said, be careful when fighting monsters, you don't turn into one. Um, this is the irony of so many revolutions. The revolutionary zealots are so fabulous. They start out with such a dream and then they get in power and it just goes south really fast. <laughs> so uh, it's the hardest job. It's the hardest job to transform the world instead of to try to mold it into an image we have. Yeah, what's familiar. Um, thank you so much. We've been talking to Elizabeth Lesser, Cassandra Speaks, When Women Are the Storytellers.